Hello and welcome to this introduction to orthographic sketch sketching. This is plan B, always have a backup plan. So what we're going here is going to have a look at what's out there, other examples online of orthographic views. It's a good idea to have a look and see what's out there, but have a quick look at what examples uh, around different objects, things that you've maybe not seen already. So I'm going for something fairly grand at the moment with the Rolls Royce. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a production car or it's a development model, but you can see there a plan view above an elevation, the front of the car to the left and the rear of the car to the right hand side, and how those sizes project, how those heights and widths and lengths project from one end to the other. But it is kind of big, so let's look at something a little bit smaller. Um, so on a Rolls Royce, something at home, maybe a pair of shoes, or in this case, a pair of sandals. Um, there is a lot of detail in this, but let's just see if the basic rules still work. If that plan view is directly above the elevation, if the end elevation is lined up height-wise with the elevation. So the views still do link from something as big as a Rolls Royce to something as small as a pair of shoes. Here's an example from a website trying to show how this idea of the views could be considered. The green object is inside a case, a glass case, and the viewer is looking straight through the glass as if he's drawn on the glass to each particular view. So in the front, he's drawn the plan above, his, sorry, the elevation above, he's drawn the, the plan, and the sides, he's drawn the end elevations. If you unfold that box somehow, this glass box, you'd end up with the views arranged the way very much we've had them in the previous drawings. Just ignore the top view and the, the, uh, the underneath view. Another example of the same thing. I've just slowed this down. It's a more complex form, but if you see as it's folded out, do you see how we've got to have the top view B up above? We're going to have D and C at the end elevations. The little dashed lines there that give us some detail that's kind of hidden. We'll look at that later on. Uh, it's actually got some extra views as well. These ones are E and F. They're like the round the back and underneath. We're just going to look primarily at the front, side and top views at the moment. Okay, bigger building again. Simpler view, it's a log cabin. Again, just taken from images online. Could you imagine what that object would look like in 3D? We're giving you a two views, related views, side view and front view, end elevation and elevation. There are some details, like there's a little thing sticking out somewhere, a little porch. Would that be at the front of the back? And this is a much, much bigger building. So I've slowed the video down a little bit. And let's see if you can see the links between the front view. I think that's the one on the right where you can see steps going up. In the left-hand view, the end elevation, you can see the side-on view of those steps as they rise up. Now, we can cast lines across from one view to the other to see how things that appear similar actually are slightly different as you project across, especially around that roof with its funny, sticky-outy windows in the roof space. We've got different heights for different roof parts, but the bit that's been circled, we call that a veranda or a, a porch sticking out the front. In the side view, that would appear there in the red area. It's got some pillars, some steps, and maybe somewhere to sit out of an evening. There's a yellow bit sticking out, and that's an overhanging window. And you can see how in the right-hand view, you can see there's nothing underneath it. So that view doesn't, it shows clearly it's sticking out, whereas the end elevation, it looks like it's flush. So we really need the two views to get a better idea. Ideally, we need three. We need three views to get a full understanding. Yes, I am old enough, 1979. I had left school by then, but these two views of something you may recognise. It's the patent drawings for the Lego figures. We've got an elevation, end elevation, shown as figure one and figure two. Uh, let's see again, do these views have dimensions in common? For example, the elevation shows the height and the width, whereas the end elevation shows the height and the thickness. So two views giving 2D, two dimensions for the parts, and in this case, the assembly. It's a bit older than me, 1951. It's a fairly famous chair design. Uh, we're looking at three views. We might get rid of the top one just to see uh, the the clarity in this. Although it's an old hand-drawn, ink-drawn uh, drawing, we've got a back view and a side view. Let's just take it as being the right-hand view is the elevation and the left-hand view is the end elevation. So we're looking at the back of the object. So looking at that at the moment, can you spot the links between the two? It is a bit faint, so I'm going to add a touch of colour here just so you can see which part, in this case the backrest, the seat, the legs themselves, which will be different colours. They've got the blue ones towards the front. You can see how from that side view they do stick out wider. The back legs in red are narrower and lower. 
Now you get a better idea of the form and then the back rest, the, the green bit that seems to link everything together, it's made out of bent plywood. So this material will be bending a bit like you might consider acrylic can be bent, a little bit more technical bending in plywood. And that gives a clear understanding for somebody looking at way, way back, 1951, of the detail for the construction of this chair design. So, this type of drawing has been on the go for a long time. It's an international standard, orthographic, looking at right angles at a surface and representing a two-dimensional view. Now, in reality, when you look at things at right angles, you're looking at them in 3D. You've got two eyes, and that's what gives us this parallax, this three-dimensional uh, view. We're trying to simplify that down using lines and 2D shapes. And in this case, the colour certainly helps. And if it helps in your drawings, touch of colour might be a way of just getting these things through to sink into your head. So, I think the colours help there. Purple, yellow, blue, red and green. Luckily, contrasting colours so they can stand out. Moving on then to the next drawing, it might be a little bit more up to date, it might be something you recognise, it might even be something we've seen before. Again, just grabbed off a, a, an online resources for orthographic views. There are two types of orthographic, one we call third angle and one we call first angle. In this case, it was done by somebody in a high school, maybe a couple of years ago, and we've got the top view, the plan, the elevation and the end elevation of, and this has been produced on a computer, this is a CAD drawing, of this little Lego space figure. So coming towards the end now, hopefully this is sinking in. Sketches of somebody stolen the wheels off a Porsche. You can see how the wing mirrors and the bonnet and the length, height, etc. relate one from the other. It's a little bit bigger if it, ever was, if it was ever made. It's a fantasy drawing for a, um, a game, I think. Futuristic sh a ship in some sort. But again, if you, if you pause these videos and actually have a look up close, you can see how lots of detail have been projected from one view to the other. This is much, much simpler. It's a block shaped, slopey bits, flat bits, something like the stuff we showed you in the first video, and maybe it's a little easier to understand. There's a little bit of a 45 degree red line, we'll maybe discuss that later on. But if you look at the plan, elevation and end elevation, and I link in some way, they've already got some, some dashed lines to give you a hint, where those parts relate to each other. So projecting down and across. And there's a little hint about that 45 degree line, but we, we will give you a little bit more information on that later on the course. So, fairly complex things from futuristic battleships, fairly old stuff from chairs from the 1950s, almost 1940s, to something as simple as this. Your chance now is to go and find some real stuff, something that you could possibly imagine a front view, a side view, and I top you off, and we'll keep it fairly simple to start off with. Nothing as complex as sandals, nothing as complex as battleships. Might be something fairly boxy like a microwave or a laptop. There's an example of a computer from Apple. You can see how the plan and the elevation sit one above the other. Go on, get looking.